Hello and welcome to another one of Charlie's Hikes. I'm back at the High Meadow Trailhead, going up to Star Lake on the Tahoe Rim Trail. I dropped a little bit out of my pack from what I shared previously, because the forecast got even warmer than the original plan. So I went ahead and left behind my booties, my bivy, and my balaclava. Left that behind as well. And uh, so that was seven ounces out. And I added in these ankle gaiters that I'm wearing right now because there's going to be less snow on the trail than originally anticipated. And I might even be able to make it around Relay Peak in a few more days. The situation right now is pretty rapid snow melt. Record high temperatures potentially today and tomorrow. And I'm going uphill up this road that I really didn't want to hike again, but I'm doing it. See you up the trail. One thing vastly different from last year is the amount of water on the trail. This is lovely, good place to cool down and wet down my hat. All right, I came from down there and just up and up I go, up this road. I didn't totally map it out, but I read somewhere at 2,700 foot climb and it's like 90 degrees out here at least, if not warmer. So definitely a good test. I've been soaking my shirt and my hat in water. Electrolytes are one of the key things I'm doing on this trip that I did not do last year. I've got multiple shots of liquid IV for each day. And they're great because they're individual packets that you can just empty into a smart water bottle and keep on hiking. So they've been a game changer for me in my hikes before this one. And uh, they're already making a difference out here. Making steady progress up this climb, getting back to Star Lake. If you didn't see last year's video, Star Lake is where we got off the trail. I was hiking with my brother-in-law, Zev, and we hiked from Tahoe City, about half the trail around here to Star Lake. He had an injury and we had to get him off the trail. So we walked down this long dirt road that I'm on to do that. And I wasn't enthralled with going back up it. I didn't have enough time to do it last year, but here I am a year later, finally ready to do it. And once I get up here to Star Lake, kind of erase my memory of this road and just look forward to racking up some more TRT miles. That's what I'm here to do. This feels good. I made it to the trail split. I'm basically the beginning of the Star Lake Trail is right here. Still some snow up in there. I'd be curious to see how much the trail crosses the snow. I'm ready for it if it does. And uh, I still have like 15, 1600 feet to climb here. I looked it up. I took a break. I'm taking a break every once in a while. Working really hard to maintain my uh, level of fluids, uh, trying to drink about a liter an hour. And uh, so far it's working out okay. And yeah, it is hot as hell out here, but I'm hanging in there, my body's hanging in there, and I'm making good progress. Looking forward to getting up on that ridge and starting the traverse towards Monument Pass. And I'll be back on the TRT. Well, if you look out there, you can see the lake and some mountains uh, around that end of the lake, kind of the south end, southwest end.
I remember being up there last year. There was absolutely no snow. It's definitely not last year. And I believe last year it was around a few days earlier than now. Amazing year for snow in California. Water sports are about to begin. This last section of trail was a lot cooler, feeling good. This wet section should be pretty nice. Getting closer and closer now to Star Lake. I was able to work all these rocks all the way across here to send up with a little bit of a wet foot. Also, by turning around, I noticed that beautiful view of all the greenery down the valley. Love it. Well, in the end, that climb was 2,400 feet, and I had it at seven and a half miles, which is probably why I had it at eight last time. The sign back there says four, so I remember why I was a little annoyed the last time, and that was four to High Meadows Trailhead. Oh well, moving on down the TRT. Nice little evening descent. I think I'm gonna wrap around this ridge I'm staring at and then head through a pass and with some further descending after that. All right, officially in Nevada, the state line. It's about 7.30. I think the sun sets about 8.30 tonight. I'm just enjoying all these golden hour views out into Nevada that I've been showing you. Done about 12 and a half miles. I'd really like to get to mile 18 today, so we'll see how it goes. I think I can probably do a couple more before sunset. That'll put me close to 14 and a half, 15. And then we'll see from there. I can camp anywhere kind of in that area. There are a number of creeks flowing and puts me close to my resupply for tomorrow at uh, Tramway Market. And that has been my goal so I can hike a dry stretch, uh, the longest one on the trail I'm aware of, and do it in the morning on another record heat day.
Well, I got my own personal mosquito fan club going on this morning, waiting for me to emerge from this tent. I'm going to throw on some rain gear and a bug net. Should be good enough. Um, last night, I hiked until, well, I got to bed about 10. I hiked until, I think, about 9.30. And uh, about I'm about two miles from uh, the tramway market where I'm getting my resupply this morning. Um, it was a warm night. I didn't stop sweating until well after 10. Finally got cool enough sometime after midnight to uh, to cover up a little bit. Um, yeah, just going to get on with the day. Uh, today looks like about 17 miles. I'm going to go to the Spooner Summit area, and uh, this is the big dry stretch coming up. Well, I came down here last night, and I kind of looked over this way, and I was like, you know, that spot's fairly level. I think I can make that work. And it did work pretty well. Far out, I called out a few relatively level spots at this bend in the trail. So, yep, made that work. And uh, boy, the morning's beautiful. It's the lake out there. Well, the mosquitoes went away pretty quickly this morning. Thankfully, these are not the desolation wilderness mosquitoes, which I was comparing to the zombies in World War Z for the past year, or have been for the past year. Uh, they would just, as you would see on that last video, bite through DEET and everything else. Uh, these mosquitoes were pretty chill. I mean, they'll bite you, but at least buzz around your head. So, please for that beautiful early morning walk here. It's cooler, although you can still feel some of the hot air from yesterday. And it's supposed to be another hot one. I've not downloaded a forecast. I almost don't want to know. I gotta hike what I'm gonna hike. So, um, that'll be good enough. And if all goes according to plan, I might wrap it up uh, early to mid afternoon and just settle into a campsite or I might continue on. We're just gonna see how it goes. And my body's feeling great. I've got a couple of uh, little blisters on the tips of my big toes, um, kind of up high. And I just put some Luco tape on those this morning. But uh, otherwise, I'm just slightly sore. I'm just feeling really good. So far, so good. Uh, enjoying, just enjoying the, all of this. It's so beautiful. Coming up on Tramway Market and the Fox and Hound restaurant. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get anything there or if I'll even try, but Tramway Market's where I have my resupply. And this is after a climb through a neighborhood and up a dirt road that is a Blue Blaze side trail off of the Tahoe Rim Trail. All right, I just left Tramway Market. This is probably the heaviest my pack will be. It should be the heaviest the entire trip. Got my resupply for the next about four days and I've got water, uh, three liters of water, it's about six pounds of water for this 15 mile dry stretch that I am starting momentarily. So I'm gonna take it slow today, I'm gonna suck it up. I think based on the feel of this pack, uh, Spooner Summit's probably a good destination. I'll have to sort out the water situation when I get there, hoping there's a water cache. And if there is, then I don't have to go down to the restrooms, which are at the lake, and they're like another 1.4 miles off the trail, one way. So, yeah, we'll see what happens, but one step at a time, one hour at a time, let's make our way through this day. And uh, definitely, these packs, uh, this is a frameless pack, they're great um, to about 20 pounds. Once you get over 20 pounds of weight, they start to hurt. 
This one's at about, I estimate about 25 pounds. I think I've got about 14 pounds of food and water in here right now. So, plus my 12 pound base weight. So that's plenty for me. All right, back on the trail at almost nine o'clock. Should give me a good three hours at least of morning walking before it gets too warm. And uh, as you can see, the trail has become a bit of a road. Getting ready to cross Highway 207. It looks like it'll be a little bit challenging. It's a fair amount of traffic coming through here. Gonna have to be, be quick. You can see the snow levels out there towards the Desolation Wilderness, and I suspect that is why we are not seeing, I'm not seeing a lot of people out here through hiking. Uh, I've met some day hikers and some backpackers, but nobody who's doing even the portion I'm doing. I think typically you come down here to do the whole thing if you can. Uh, my situation is just unique, but my decision on Relay Peak is going to partly be based upon whether or not I run into anybody or find any comments people have been up there and from eyeballing it. But otherwise, things are good. I also just found a water source, so drank a half liter, topped off my supply, so I'm back to three liters. So yesterday I took the uh, shuttle from Reno and got dropped off the casinos there right on the state line. You can see all the boats that are moored out there. There's a uh, celebrity golf tournament going on this weekend and I had lunch with my friend Joe yesterday and he was telling me he'd be out on his boat today kind of watching the proceedings because that's a good place to watch from. So anyway, I believe that's what's going on. It's definitely busy down there. And you can see the desolation wilderness in the background. From a very short side trail off the Tahoe Rim Trail that's listed as a vista. And what a vista it is. There's pretty much all the desolation wilderness going from left to right. And Lake, of course. And uh, South Lake Tahoe. Beautiful spot. And then the Tahoe Rim Trail keeps going south there. Up over that ridge off to the left in the background. And that was some of my favorite hiking last year. It's really cool. Well, it's about 10.30 in the morning. It's definitely heating up. And I'm just out here hiking with a purpose at this point. Saw a sign a little ways back. 12 and a half miles to Spooner Trailhead. And hopefully there's a water cache there. If not, I'll go find some. But I've got about two and three quarters right now, liters. And, uh... It's gonna be touch and go. It's gonna be hot and I'm not really sure how much I'm gonna need to consume here. So anyway, uh, should be exciting. But yeah, I'm just hiking with purpose. I'm not gonna film too much. There are some outstanding views coming at one point and I will definitely pick those up. These little spots of shade are welcome. I've got 11 and a half to spooner as of a sign a little bit ago and I'm down to about two and a quarter liters of water. So it's gonna keep moving. Came from over there yesterday, all along here.
All right, presently 2.6 miles out from the Spooner Trailhead. And should hit my campsite down point four before that. Drop some stuff off. Hearing there are water caches down at the trailhead, so an advance thank you to anybody and everybody who left water there. I'm hopeful to grab some and take it back up the hill to my campsite. That's the plan. It's been a warm day, long descent after quite a bit of climbing earlier. And I will be happy to see my tent and put my feet up. This gal in the water right here made my day. This is a cache on the north side of the highway. I believe it's Highway 50. The south side was totally out, and I was not looking forward to walking to Spooner Lake. I am wiped out. So this is huge. I'm going to transfer this to some other containers and hopefully leave a little bit. Let me tell you a little more about today. So this Evernew Trekking System Products item, I've had this for a few years and I've used it a lot. And I use it as the bag that I go and grab water with and then I filter it. And it fits my Sawyer grate up here. Um, unfortunately, it developed a hole um, somewhere along here and started shooting water when I would flip it upside down to squeeze into my Sawyer um, or squeeze through my Sawyer. So. That became a problem uh, on this trip, and so I haven't been using it much. And instead, I had this platypus as a backup. So I started using it. The problem is the, uh, the, the top on this does not fit the Sawyer, uh, the regular Sawyer squeeze well. And you have to get it on just right, otherwise um, it will squirt water off the sides. And what happened to me on the trail today was just that. Um, I had a bad experience with this guy. I thought, hey, I could switch back to this guy and have a pinhole leak, but then I couldn't exchange water between the two. And I ended up you know, carrying three liters out there into that 15 mile dry stretch, but I ended up having a bunch of leak away. Um, so I, I still, I, I think I lost maybe a third to a half a liter, but you know, which was significant on that stretch. Um, you know, I still made it kind of on, on fumes, on small amounts of water at the very end, but it was, uh, it was touch and go, and it was tough. And um, these two items and their issues at the moment are one of the things um, I'm pondering in, in terms of uh, whether or not I go the next stretch of the Tahoe Rim Trail, um, because that particular stretch has um, a hand pump that I was just reading comments is running very slow and has been reported as broken and it's on the nine it's nine miles in after a 2,000 foot climb and then after that you have um, more time more space like another 10 11 miles without water potentially so and after this weekend's record temperatures today was another record um, yeah I'm just really debating what do I do going forward here was my campsite for the night last night. Worked out pretty well. You can hear the road noise, but I had a view of Spooner Lake and then a view of Lake Tahoe back there. And uh, some nice views around this way as well, some of the other mountains. And the weather has definitely shifted this morning. I'm sure I didn't leave anything. Cooler. It's trying to rain up at a higher elevation cloudier. This campsite is about 0.4 miles from the trailhead at Spooner. Last night I had to 
I was pretty much on very little water when I got here. So I had to go down, check and see if there was a water cache. And uh, I showed you that one that I found on the other side of the highway. So if you're ever here and you uh, don't find a water cache on one side of the highway, definitely check the other before you go any further. So update on my trip. I'm gonna switch sides here because I think the lighting will be better. Oh, much better. All right. So update on my trip. I am uh, done two days out here, close to 40 miles. It's been great. I've enjoyed it. Yesterday, kicked my butt. And uh, yeah, I am definitely gonna gonna pull off trail at this point. A few reasons. One, the water bladder situation. I really need a new one. I can't count on the filter connection to the platypus. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it spills water all over. Requires a lot of playing around. Uh, the Marlet um, hand pump, which is a, a thing that you use to get water nine miles up the trail. You got a 2,000 foot climb before you get there. Apparently, you know, it was disabled. People are still getting some water out of it. It's running real slow right now. People have found some water around it from snow melt and other stuff. After this weekend's hot weather, I'm just not trusting it a lot. So if I were to go up there, I'd want to carry enough water for um, at least three liters for a 20 mile dry stretch. I think I'd find water probably between miles 15 and 20 from what I've read, but I'm not sure. Got people coming up the trail, so I'm gonna pause the recording here. So yeah, the cooler air um, today would have definitely been a good factor in my favor after yesterday. Yesterday was record heat in South Lake Tahoe. I'm assuming all around the region. It was so hot. Uh, for me, I think I was wrestling with heat exhaustion a lot of the afternoon. I just kept taking breaks every mile or two. Just trying to cool off. That was my big challenge and worried about water and spilling water all over the place. It took a lot out of me. I think if I was going to do this next section, I would take a different strategy because I've got this section roughly 20 miles and I've got another 20 miles into Kings Beach and then another 20 miles into Tahoe City. The last two you could do with a really light pack. And this one uh, coming up, I would want to do with a really light pack. So I think if I ever do come back here, I'll do it do it differently than what I've got loaded up. So part of the issue I have is the, the V2, which I'm wearing right now. Uh, it is um, made for really light loads. Uh, it'll handle a bear can. I've got a bear can and several days of food in here. That's pretty heavy, but then when you add three liters of water to it, um, that, that gets to be really uncomfortable. So that was the, as bad a problem as I had yesterday with the water was just how uncomfortable this pack had become with what I was asking it to do. It's just not fully, it's just one of those things you gotta bear when you have one of these. It's great most of the time, but man, when you have to ask it to do that, it it doesn't cooperate very well. So. That's a factor too, because I'm gonna essentially have to repeat that today. I had no appetite yesterday. I ate food before uh, and at Tramway, and then after Tramway Market, it just got hot. It was in the 70s, right from the beginning of the hike. Then it just got hotter and hotter, and uh, I had no appetite. All I could do was eat a couple of energy bars, like bite by bite, like very slowly. No dinner last night. Dehydrated, still dehydrated. Uh, and the water limitations here are really challenging too. So if I were to hike on, I'd have to go down to Spooner, get a bunch of water, and then keep going. So, you know, this actually wasn't a tough choice. I was so spent last night. I had to go down. I'll just tell you what happened real quick. So, you know, I had to go down, get water, carry three liters of water back up this hill. It's 0.4 miles, but it's hundreds of feet. I have no idea. I'd have to look at it, but it's not a small hike down. So I did that, then I hadn't eaten any food and I wasn't really hungry. And I had basically maxed out my small bear can. And so I couldn't stow all my food and I had ants all over my campsite. So I was in my tent trying to get my food into the bear can. It was still hot, I was sweating. I didn't really have a lot to sweat at that point. Uh, I mean, it was just a real challenging scenario. And eventually I concluded 
that I needed to get rid of some of my food in order to stow it in the bear can for the night. So then I had to walk back down to the trailhead and put my food away there in a trash can, unfortunately, and then walk all the way back up the hill. And then I ended up just sitting on top of my bear can with my shirt off, just trying to cool off in the breeze. Unfortunately, it did cool off last night and you could really feel the cold front come through. But it was, it was a pretty miserable end to the day. Pretty miserable day. I'm doing okay today. I could hike. But all those factors combined, it just didn't make sense for me to continue at this point. I love to finish trails. It's awesome. And uh, this is a tough trail. I'm going to feel a real sense of accomplishment if I do finish this one. Just because, you know, I'm just thinking of the adventures I had. And this isn't a through hike at this point. I'm just doing little sections of it. But uh, anyway, I'm going to Tahoe City tonight. There I've got a box with a bunch of town clothes that I shipped there that uh, I was planning to stay in Tahoe City on Thursday night. So I just swapped my reservations around. It's Monday and I'll make it work. And then I'm flying out tomorrow. I shifted my flights. Had cell service at the campsite here, so that's a good thing to know. You will have cell service if you camp that 0.4 miles up the trail. And so I was able to make all those arrangements. All right, that's a lot of information. Hope you enjoyed this hike. It was really cool two days. Uh, saw a lot of good stuff. I enjoyed the challenge. Uh, definitely yesterday pushed me pretty far. I think parts of it were type three fun, but uh, a whole lot of type two fun wrapped in there as well. And uh, yeah, just thankful for all this. I might get another trip in while I'm still on this vacation when I get home. We'll see. All right, well, thank you again for joining me on another one of Charlie's hikes. I might have a little more footage before I'm done. But uh, right now, just going to the trailhead. Going to see if I can find myself a ride out of here to Tahoe City. Hello, and welcome to another one of Charlie's hikes. This camera is having issues, unfortunately. But I'm going to keep talking. And my, uh, something else. My booties, my bivvy. All right, pleasant present. <laughs> All right, present. Yesterday just about kicked. Uh, it was. Uh, it was a family-friendly program.